let us go into nodal analysis now so what is a node node is the intersection of three or more branches in a circuit so why nodal analysis is used there are unknown values such as voltage current and passive elemental values which need to be found and to find them we need to form the equations and to form these equations we use tools like mesh analysis and nodal analysis previously we saw that the mesh analysis depends upon the law of conservation of energy and nodal analysis depends upon the law of conservation of charge so if there is this node in a circuit and if there are branches attached to this node if i say current i is coming towards the node from this side so this current must distribute all together so whatever current is coming towards the node equal amount of current should leave the node that is the law of conservation of charge in using this principle we form different equations which help us solve for the unknowns now at each node we have written that we will be applying the kcl what is kcl kcl is nothing but kirchhoff's current law according to kcl the addition of all the currents coming at a node is zero so first we have to assume a particular sign or particular polarity of the current direction so if we assume that the currents coming towards the node are positive so here if we have i1 i2 i3 i4 while applying kcl we will do like i1 minus of i2 minus of i3 minus of i4 is equal to zero because we have assumed the direction which is coming towards node to be positive hence i2 as it is going away we have taken negative and similarly we have Done for I three and I two. The objective is to form the equations, as I said, to solve for the unknowns. By solving for unknowns, simultaneous equations can easily be solved by matrix method. The matrix method is useful because every time you come across node analysis, you can easily put the values in the matrix form without going into nodal analysis directly. Let us see how. first in nodal analysis you have to identify the number of nodes in the given network once you identify the number of nodes you are free to apply kcl at each node now set the direction of current in each branch so wherever there is a resistor you have to assume any direction of current and name it say i1 i2 and so on then you have to apply kcl at each node that means equating Currents or adding all the currents coming at the node to be zero. Now we have to express these equations in matrix form. Let us see how we can express these equations in matrix form easily. So here we have a circuit. There are different resistors and two voltage sources. Now we are going to first identify the number of nodes. So there is this node, say A. There is this node, say B, and there are these two nodes. But as the negative terminal of both these batteries is connected at these two nodes, we will just assume ground potential to these nodes. Okay? So these nodes will not be applying KCL. We will be applying KCL at only node A and node B. Why we apply KCL at node A and node B? B get some equations and we have to express those equation in matrix form but the equation is in the form of summation of currents now we have to express each current as the division of voltage by resistance so when we have i1 in our equation we will represent i1 as v1 minus va divided by r1 so Whenever we will come across I1, we will write V1 minus V8 upon R1. Similarly, for let us say I3, for I3 we will write VA minus VB divided by R3. This is how every current will be represented as in terms of voltage and resistance. And after you form these equations, you will get equations in VA and VB as unknowns. Values of R1, R2, R3 
R4, R5, R6 will be known. And so this matrix will be known. And this is known as admittance matrix. As you can see, there are the inverse of resistances, admittance matrix. Alright. This is voltage matrix. So you have Y into V is equal to I. And we have current going in this direction and current going in this direction for the last matrix. Alright. So how to put this value? So for node A, which is node 1, we will assume all the admittances connected to the node 1 and the summation of it. So the admittances connected to node 1 are 1 upon R1, 1 upon R3 and 1 upon R2. So we are adding all these admittances. Similarly, let us see for node B. At node B, there are three admittances connected again, which are 1 upon R3, 1 upon R4, 1 upon R5. So these many we have written. Let us just neglect 1 upon R6 as it is not connected. And we have filled the positions 1, 1 and 2, 2. We have to fill up the positions 1, 2 and 2, 1 now. So these positions are filled up by the admittance connected in common with both the nodes. Which is the admittance connected common to the both the nodes? It is 1 upon R3. We will just put negative sign and put it in the position 1, 2 and 2, 1. So this is how you can form the matrix. Once you get this matrix, it is very easy to handle the equation. And once you have the equation, it is just a matter of time to get to your answer. Let us solve a problem to make you understand better. Here, we have to find out the voltage across 5 ohm resistance and voltage across 10 ohm resistance. This is the question in the book. Now, we have this equation and we have to identify the number of nodes first. We have identified 3 nodes. So, we have VA, VB and VC. As we are connecting the bottom terminal to the ground, ultimately VA becomes 20 volt. So, we will be applying the nodal analysis at VB and VC. If we consider VB or VC, let us first apply the nodal analysis at B. So, here I3 is equal to I4 plus I5, which we have written. If you express them in the voltage and resistance form, you get such an expression and ultimately if you simplify you will get this equation in VB and VC. Similarly, if you apply the nodal analysis at VC or at C, we have I5 is equal to I6, I5 is equal to I6 plus 1 ampere, which is the current going in this direction. And expressing I5 as VB minus VC upon 5, and I6 as VC minus 40 divided by 2 ohms plus 1, we will get another equation in VB and VC. If you solve these two simultaneous equations, we will have value of VB as this and VC as this. The voltage across 5 ohm resistance is VB minus VC. Solving that, we get the answer for voltage across 5 ohm resistance and similarly we get the answer for the voltage across 10 ohm resistance. This is how you can apply nodal analysis. The mesh analysis and nodal analysis collectively can be used to solve equations. There is no fixed rule which unknown you have to find. Any unknown and you can apply ACL, AVL, mesh analysis, nodal analysis according to your convenience. I will help you once again when you call me back. Thank you so much.